Welcome back to the uh, Mindful Monk. I'm in the community chapter room where the community meets on a Monday night and on other, other occasions. It's a beautiful space to meet. Thank you to um, both Eleanor and Daniel for your suggestions. They've been helpful. And also hello to Quiva and Alex, who I'm glad are enjoying these clips. One nature hint this week is about the elder flower, which is in flower in Ireland at the moment. It can be used to make fritters dipped in, in batter and made, we used to get them from our mother when we were young. And my memory of them is that they were very tasty. They're the ones that give the elder berries and make the elder, elder wine, but that could be in the autumn. Now this week I want to reflect on the on stress. I've been feeling edgy, even angry and volatile and mood swings and also feeling difficult to concentrate and generally, you know, hard, finding it hard to be balanced in my reactions, which are perfectly normal responses to stress and a certain tiredness too. And we must remember that as well as our own personal reaction, we're also swimming in a pool of collective fear and anxiety, which intensifies our reaction. And if you suffer from depression or anxiety or trauma, well, this is going to intensify those feelings at this time. So what, what is going on? You know, when we're faced with threat, our nervous system like in all animals, has an ancient survival response. That's to fight, flight, or freeze. One of the three. This response is immediate. We see a lion, a wild dog, and a cascade of physical and biochemical reactions happen in your body, a mobilizing of energy. Your blood is withdrawn from your brain and from digestive system because you don't need them to be thinking when you're got to fight or flight. So there's a lot going on, a lot going on. Now, so, so when a gazelle sees a lion, its response is immediate. There's no waiting. It runs as fast as it can and if it survives, it stops, it shakes and trembles and then goes back to grazing. Fine. Well, we're not gazelles and we have the complication and the privilege of having an imagination and a mind. And the scary thing for us is that we can't see this threat. We can't locate it. But we can imagine it. We know it's there. We know it's there. But because we can't see it or locate it, we tend to go into shutdown mode. Our nervous system tends to freeze from it uh, while we wait for a safe future, which we don't know when it's going to come. And this can lead to a hyper aroused state in your body. Mm -hmm. We're ready for action, which never comes, never happens. And as is often exaggerated by then, by feeling locked down and trapped in this very thing. So what can we do? Well, there are certain resources we can draw on. We can't do anything about the pandemic, but we can do something about our reaction to it. And the first of those, I think, is to control what we expose our mind to. Pascal said, when you face difficult times, carry something beautiful in your mind or your heart. I think that's a lovely concept. I have an image of a bluebell wood and walking with a friend, and that softens calms my nervous system. So control, not too much bad news. Second thing, we can learn from animals. When they have been under threat, they shake and they tremble, you know. So you can shake and you can tremble, you can dance, you can move, you can skip. All these things help to release that pent up energy. The third thing we can do is the breathing exercise I did, the, the turtle reflex, watching for our shoulders going up, because if your shoulders go up, you're sending a clear sign to your body that there's a threat out there. So remembering to keep those shoulders down. Now, an additional exercise you can do is the VU, 
sound, again uh, invented or created by Peter Levine. So you take a deep breath in. That reverberating in your tummy right down there. I put my hand over it too to soothe or ease that area. Now you can add to that with a hug which is by putting your right arm under your left shoulder here and over your heart and your left hand over here and you can do the voo sound while doing that or you can do this anytime and I find that is also soothing and helpful. A more dramatic exercise is to do the chopping one, which is just to put your hands up in the air and to come down woof, woof, woof. Okay, might look a bit strange, but it, 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 again, it can help release some of that pent up energy that's, that's stored in the body. Now after these, notice any sensations in your body, any images, any thoughts, especially after doing the voo sound. You might find a tingling in your body, shoulders maybe react, sense some sensations, just note them gently, without judgment. A third thing we can do is to get become connected with people. It shouldn't be called social distancing, but it's physical distancing, but we need to be socially engaged with people. That's a, it's a great buffer, I find, even to make a phone call to one or two people against fear and our, our helplessness. It's a shared problem which makes, reduces the size of it. And talk to people about, if you are feeling anxious or uptight or whatever, talk to people again. That dehorns it in a way or takes away. So those are some things that I'm doing. Uh, listening to some dance music helps me as well. Anyway, I hope you find some of these well and every blessing at this important time of Pentecost when the Spirit comes as our guide. The Spirit is available to us as our guide if we pay attention. So let us pray that at this important time as we head to a court, towards Pentecost Sunday, next Sunday, where we'll be open to the guidance of the Spirit and we'll have the courage to do what it asks of us. Amen. Keep safe and keep well.